What is the cost of living in Sherwood Park? Well, we're going to talk about that in this video. Hi, this is Melody Wilson. Thanks so much for coming back to our channel to watch what it costs to live in Sherwood Park. So Sherwood Park is a suburb outside of Edmonton. It's not very far. You can get into Edmonton within 15, 20 minutes, depending on where you live in Sherwood Park. Usually on average is about 30 to 45 minutes. And again, you have to remember traffic as well. So Sherwood Park is a little suburb that people love to live in. It's very family friendly. And so we wanted to talk to you about the average cost of homes in terms of living there, the average cost as a family in terms of what ideas, recreation ideas you do, what your kids would do, and how much it would cost to live in Sherwood Park. So let's start with houses since I'm a realtor. The average cost of a single family home in Sherwood Park is $440,000. So a cost of a condo in total, like apartments and townhouses, the cost is $292,000 on average. Now, if you look at just townhouses with condo fees, the average there is a little slightly lower at a little over $259,000. So in the last 12 months, 931 properties in Sherwood Park, single family homes, sold. And it ranged all the way from 240,000 all the way to $1.2 million. So there's quite the range of homes that you can buy in Sherwood Park. Something that you wanna note and consider for cost is property taxes. Property taxes in Sherwood Park are known to be quite a bit higher than Edmonton. St. Albert and Sherwood Park both have higher property taxes. So on an average home, you can budget around at least three to $5,000. Totally depends on the neighborhood that you're living in and the size of home. Property taxes are calculated by the size of the home, the age of the home. Keep in mind, they don't come into your home, so they have no idea in terms of the renovations, but they will make a, um, a judgment based on the age of your home. So if it's a brand new home versus an older home, they're gonna make the property assessed values on that. Now, speaking of that, property assessed values and your actual market value are two different things. There's a video up here that we talk about in terms of the difference between property and city assessed values. So when you live in a home, you have utilities that are gonna cost you money as well, right? So utilities, you can budget anywhere from three to $500 as a family of four to five. It totally depends, again, on your water usage. If you guys like to take those hot showers every single day, or if you leave the lights on, or the kids forget to turn the lights off, your utility bills could be higher. It runs very similar to Edmonton. All of Alberta's utilities are run quite similar. The municipal is who um, provides the water sewer, so you have no choice on that, and that would be, in this case, Strathcona County. And then for your gas and your electricity, you have the choice to choose uh, which provider you want, and they range in prices in terms of fixed and variable rates for your utilities. Now, as a family, when you are looking at what activities your kids want to do, in Sherwood Park, it's known to be very um, hockey friendly in terms of the fact that if you, your kids love hockey, you want your kids to do well in hockey, you usually are living in Sherwood Park or St. Albert. There's a big hockey focus in these two suburbs of Edmonton. Now, the average cost for ringette or hockey ranges, but you know, approximately, it's about $900 per season. That's significantly higher than the other sports activities that you could do. So if your kids are interested in soccer or if they're interested in ball hockey, lacrosse, or baseball, it usually is around $300 per season. Now these are just approximate numbers depending on which organization you're going with, they're gonna have different varying costs, but this is just a general number to give you a start for your research. So there's also a lot of fun things to do for free in Sherwood Park. And as a family, you can check out a lot of the playgrounds that they have. There's playgrounds everywhere, almost in every single neighborhood. Um, typically you can live in an older neighborhood and have access to five parks that are within 10 to 15 minute walking distance. Now, a lot of the playgrounds are located in the schools and there's schools in every almost every neighborhood. The newer neighborhoods that don't have schools yet do have playgrounds that they have built. Now, in addition to the playgrounds, they also have spray parks in a lot of these playgrounds. So it's a great free fun activity for the kids to do and for you to take the kids out to. Another great thing, if your kids like to bike or skateboard, they do have two different places for that. They've got a BMX bike park, that's like a pump track, and then they also have the skate park. These are free usage and they're lots of fun. They're family friendly for even the younger little ones all the way up to the older ones. 
So one of the favorites for a spray park is the Broadmoor Spray Park. This one's a fun one because for us moms, there's very little sand um, at this park. And so, you know, if there's a playground and splash park combination, this is actually a favorite for moms and also for the kids because they can go back and forth between the two. Now, if you're looking for a place to take your family to go swimming or to enjoy the rec center, the Millennium Place is a great place to do that. And a membership is approximately $40 in a month for the family. And if you go at least two times, you're going to have used it. Don't forget, they also have a gym there. They have classes that you can take, not just the use of the swimming pool and the other rec center amenities in Millennium Place. And just a side note, any kids that are under two and under are actually free to go to Millennium Place. They also have a fun floating river in the swimming pool. I remember when our oldest kid just turned one years old, we took his friends, friends, um, there and everyone had so much fun at the Millennium Place. There's water slides, lots of fun to be had. If your family has dogs, in Shore Park there are a few off-leash dog parks. There's ones that are all year round and then there are some seasonal off-leash dog parks. So the ones that are all year round, the list of those are um, the Deer Mound Off-Leash Park, our Drossen Regional Park Off-Leash Area, Sally Stewart Park Off-Leash Area, and the Heritage Hills Off-Leash Area. Also another fun free thing to do with your family is there's a ton of walking trails in and around all the neighborhoods and communities. So it's a great place to be able to enjoy the outdoors and keep active as a family. So if your kids are going to school in Shored Park, you need to account for some a little bit of extra fees when it comes to having your kids in school. For the younger elementary age, you've got to have the supervision fee for lunch, and then there's also the field trip fees when applicable. Um, for junior high, high school, usually there's a little bit more fees depending on the options that your kids end up taking. So on average, you, your kids, you want to budget for each child in and around the two to three hundred dollar mark per kid per year and if your kids are taking the bus it's on average four to five hundred dollars per kid now when you have multiple kids they do give you a discount when you have multiple children so then that price will range as well so some other costs insured park for living there is if you decide to take in places like festival place this is a concert place and they have different musicians and performers and of course that ranges in price I took a look at some of the ticket prices and they range from $50 and upwards. In the summertime, they do have an outdoor patio series and you can take a look and see the costs. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're by donation, but you can always check that out and see if this is something that would be enjoyable to your family and worth the cost. So another free thing that you could do in terms of a family is the Strathcona County Library. You can sign up for a membership there and then you don't have to pay for constant usage of books, right? So it's a great opportunity for your kids to learn. And in terms of grocery shopping, I'm sure you're all wondering, the cost of living in Edmonton on this video that I talk about that is actually covers the same cost in Shored Park. It's no different. We don't have a huge range in prices. Um, there is a Costco also in Shored Park, so you can utilize that. And of course, a ton of other franchise grocery stores in Shored Park. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you have any cost of living in Shore Park that you might know of because you're local there or you're thinking of moving to Shore Park and are wondering and I didn't cover it in this video, please comment down below and we will get that answer for you. Thanks so much and we'll talk to you next time.